Hi. Hi, everyone. I am so thrilled to be here this morning and to see everyone here and to be here with you. This is so exciting. Um, so when Creative Mornings asked me what creativity means to me, I said the first thing that came to mind, which is problem solving. So I don't know why that was the first thing to pop into my mind, but it may have something to do with, uh, I studied design and illustration, or it might have something to do with the first creative people I knew, uh, or my parents, who are excellent problem solvers. So I don't necessarily see a problem as a bad thing. I see it more as an opportunity and kind of exciting. And I have a confession and I also have a problem to share with you guys. I really struggle with self-compassion. I have a hunch that everyone here also struggles with that. Am I, am I right? Yeah, okay, <laughs> I can see. Okay, I was correct, good. Um, so basically, we're a room full of creative people with a problem. Let's talk about it, see if we, we can solve it or at least make it um, a little bit easier. So it's kind of rude of me to come up here and just like bring a problem to you straight away. Like I, we haven't even met yet, but I am, I'm Tara Galuska and that's who I am. Yay, I'm here, I made it. Um, so my journey up to this point to being here today with you guys um, is like a lot of creative people's kind of all over the place and it's a story like you'll hear, you hear a lot from creatives. I was the art kid, I was the creative kid, I was the weird kid, I um, quit university, quit other courses, didn't know what the heck I was supposed to do, uh, got a real job, quit that, <laughs> um, and floundered. Years of floundering that now are all precious jewels of wisdom and, and things that I know and experiences, right? That's what it's all about. Um, so this accent also that you're hearing is a mixture of someone from Zimbabwe, Zambia, Australia, and Canada. So that's why it's a mess and that's why it's like this. So don't worry. <laughs> um, so I am an artist, a paper artist. I love paper, I love cutting and pasting and paper, paper, paper. It's what I'm all about. I'm also into miniatures and uh, obviously house plants. Um, so something else I like to do in my art practice is this ongoing project on cats. This is the first of many slides about cats and Mark, we have something to talk about after this because cats are the best. Right? Okay, yeah, everyone agrees with me. They do. Um, so, the Cat Report is the world's leading news source on my cats, Daisy and Bijou Galaska. I illustrate and hand letter the news that my husband shares with me daily about our cats. So, sometimes it's news like this. So, she was snuggled up in the blankets like a cute little grandma, and then she bit me. So, it's serious, there's violence, it's all like happening at our house. Sometimes it's a quiet news day. Sometimes they're just chasing bugs. But at the cat report, we report everything, truth, <laughs> facts, doesn't matter. Um, and sometimes the news, you know what, it's cute, but it's kind of gross too. That's life with cats. Um, so my wonderful, beautiful business partner, Jamie, is here. Um, it's her, oh, I can't remember how to use a pointer, but anyway, so she's, uh, that's the two of us, and together we partner on Thrive Art Studio, which is a community for uh, professional, female, uh, gender non-binary, gender fluid people who are professional artists. Um, so Thrive started in July of 2015. Jamie started it in her studio and just got together eight friends, as we can see up here. Um, we did some collage and we ended up having just the most amazing conversation about what it's like to be an artist and also to be a woman in the arts. And from there, from that day, we now have thrive as it is two and a bit years in and uh, as of today we have almost 150 members uh, here in Vancouver and around the world. Thank you internet for allowing us to connect um, and we run 
the main thing that we do is mastermind meetings. So it's like today how we're kind of a group of creative people gathering together, maybe doing a little problem solving. That's what we do at Thrive. Um, so people meet monthly with a group, talk about the ups and downs and ins and outs of being an artist. Um, and we also do speaker series and um, we have a Thrive Art School. So that's kind of what I basically spend all my time doing. Um, so I watched a lot of Oprah growing up and somehow I missed the information that she was sharing about self-compassion. It just didn't process in, I didn't hear it. Um, but I did hear it when I really needed to hear it and that was in uh, my mid-20s. I was in a support group and uh, it was a really hard time in my life. Um, and I knew nothing about self-compassion. My uh, way to be a good person was I really beat myself up, I pushed myself relentlessly, and I thought that any kind of what could even be close to maybe some self-compassionate behavior was just self-indulgent. Um, and I dealt with everything by myself. So that's what leads you to having to learn what self-compassion is and, uh, and is a real gift. So I learned these helpful tips, some kind of ideas about what you can do to be self-compassionate. So meditate, drink water, relax and take breaks, see a therapist when you need one, talk about my feelings, uh, forgive yourself, forgive myself, and use kind words. There's also plenty more. Um, so... Being a creative person is a gift to me. I feel so lucky. It's one of the best things that, has, that I'm fortunate to have in my life is, is my creativity. And I'm also really, it's a gift to be able to follow my dreams. Um, but with that, with following a creative path, I think we all need a lot of self-compassion. Oh my gosh, who's this? It's some more cats. And oh, this might support Mark's argument against cats, but shit, okay. <laughs> so um, my little sister, when she was kind of preschool age she, and she was angry, she, with you, she would scrunch up her fist, she'd look you in the eyes and she'd say, meanie cat, meanie cat sitting on a doormat. And it was very confronting and there was no <laughs> mixed messages about how she felt about you and your behavior. Um, so meanie cats are jerks, <laughs> they are. Uh, so it's people kind of that we've not met, but maybe they slide in and are really mean to you. So they're like an internet troll, or someone yelling at you from a car. Um, then there are sometimes mini cats who are people that we know, maybe people that we love and they are unkind to us. Um, and then the third mini cat, one that I'm very familiar with is the inner mini cat when I'm really mean to myself. I think maybe some of you might have some meanie cats too. So what do we do? What do we do about our meanie cats? Cool, it's okay. So um, with the first and the second, uh, with the first and second kind of meanie cats, you can just say thank you and goodbye. You don't actually have to have meanie cats in your life. This was a revelation to me and, uh, and one of the most kind and compassionate things I've been able to do for myself. But sometimes, um, you know, even if someone is a meanie cat, I kind of want to keep them around for whatever reason, for my own reasons. Um, and so my, my recipe for success there is boundaries. Another cool thing I got to learn uh, when I really needed to. Um, so the last group though is myself. <laughs> That's the group, I can't say thank you and goodbye, I can't put up boundaries, I have to deal with myself head on. And for that one, it's being kind to myself. If I'm being a meanie cat, being mean, then I have to be kind. Um, and it's important to remember that meanie cats are actually hurt, nicey cats inside, and they need compassion too. Um, so I am a perfectionist. I don't say this to say like, it's a humble brag, like I'm really good at everything that I do and everything's just, just such a high standard. Actually, this is one of the 
hardest things I deal with. Um, and this definition by Brene Brown, I think, really sums it up for me. So perfectionism is a self-destructive and addictive belief system that fuels this primary thought. If I look perfect, live perfectly, and do everything perfectly, I can avoid or minimize the painful feelings of shame, judgment, and blame. Shit. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> um, it's kind of like the fear of not being enough, right? So I, um, I don't know if any of you have ever had a word of the year before, but I'd heard about this idea and you kind of have a word of, for the year and you set the intention that that's what you're going to live by that year. And um, like most things, when I first hear about them and they sound like they maybe they would benefit me, I want to just shut it down. So I had a bad attitude about it, and my attitude was, well, people, people cho just choose words that would like, make a great ankle tattoo, but I don't, I don't need that. And, uh, and then, until I found my word, and this word is magical. This work helps with so many things, uh, including my perfectionism. So if I am not trying to do all of the things and be all of the things to all of the people, then I can just focus do my best, and then practice the kind of the steps that I need to in my perfectionism, which is letting go, self-acceptance, all that kind of important, uh, important um, exercises to do. So um, I highly recommend having a word of the year. I highly recommend the word no. Maybe I'll get it as a tattoo. I don't know. It's really working for me. Maybe 2018 I'll do it as well. Um, oh, my goodness. We've got another meanie cat. It's calling me selfish. Man, so sometimes I will think I'm selfish. I'll think I'm selfish because I am following my dreams and I am just doing it. And sometimes I feel selfish about it. Uh, sometimes I feel selfish because I have, cre I have a creative career. And why do I deserve to do that? Or what am I really contributing? I should be, I don't know what I should be. All of the things that I think are helpful, I'd be terrible at. I'd make a terrible nurse, social worker, all the rest of it. So, um, and then I also feel sometimes it's really selfish if I want to do the right thing just for myself, if I want to be kind to myself, I think, well, no, I should put this other person before it, or I said I'd do this, or, oh, no, it's just selfish. Oh, just suffer through, just suffer through, just keep, just keep going, keep going, keep going. And, uh, like, listening to myself talk about these ideas, they, I actually don't really believe them. I don't believe it's selfish to follow your passion or have a creative career or be kind to yourself, and yet these... Vo this little voice likes to pop up from time to time. And, uh, and yeah, so I've got to remember I'm a cool unicorn. It's okay. And uh, one of the ways I kind of do that is I, I, well, I think about selfish. Do I have a problem with someone thinking I'm selfish if I do the right thing, if I do the kind thing, if I'm being compassionate? I don't actually care. <laughs> Turns out, I don't care. Um, being selfish is not necessarily always a bad thing. So sometimes I just, I just have to own it and uh, and accept it, or look at him and say, "That's not even selfish. Don't worry about it." So, oh, all these struggles, you guys. I feel like we're really getting to know each other. All my, all my dirty laundry, right? Uh, so failure and rejection. I, my ego. <laughs> especially, hates failure and rejection. And yet, every failure and every rejection has been a gift. It has all been worth it. Um, <clears throat> because I get to learn and grow, and that's the whole point of all of this, right? Um, so, doesn't mean I have to like it, though. Doesn't mean that. So, I, um, I kind of look to my community, like the Thrive Ladies in particular, to talk about failure and rejection because it comes with the territory. If I'm doing the work and if I'm trying, it means that there's going to be failures and rejections along the way. And so they always steer me right. And basically, these are the, the um, three stages that 
I like to try and go through, um, how their practice can look different. So take gentle care. So maybe that means having a good cry. Maybe it means getting really angry because they were wrong. The person who rejected me was wrong. And, um, and uh, you know, eating cheese or whatever, right? And just being gentle about it and kind and just, just it's okay. Feel your feelings. Get through it. Then some more gold is to learn from it. Take what you want to, what you can then use for the next thing. Um, and then it's time to jump back in the ring, do it all again, because that's what it's all about. Um, so this amazing illustration is, uh, maybe it's a scribble, maybe it's my brain, maybe it's my feelings. No, this is uh, my is my path, my creative path. This is what it looks like. Just a big old mess. Um, and it is exciting with lots of twists and turns and roundabouts, but it's also can be really lonely, confusing, frustrating, isolating, scary, all of the things. Um, and my re remedy for that, how I deal with that is by surrounding myself with a community. So when I, basically I just hang around people who are living a life very similar to mine, and so it looks normal. So sometimes, you know, I, like it's hard being an artist and you talk to people who are maybe like normal, and they, and they, they do not understand. They're just like, sorry, you do, you do what for a living? And, and you're upset about what? Like this is not a thing, and you have to try and explain it, and it's just, I mean, I, I do love normal people. I know there's none of you in the room, so it's okay, but this is, I think this is going on the internet, so sorry, normal people on the internet. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've really got this community of other weirdos around me that all looks normal, and they're also all experiencing many of the exact same things as me, and so they can share their wisdom and their strength and their um, excitement about it too, and that just makes such a difference. Um, so does anyone here think that the world maybe could use some more compassion? Or do you think we're like, we're at the, okay, I see some hands raised. Okay, I'm, I'm on board with this. Um, I also have some good news though. So we do, we need some more compassion, but we have it. Like compassion isn't a finite resource. It's not like we just got a certain amount of compassion for time and then it's done and it's used up. Instead, it's renewable, reusable, we can share it, we can access it, you, we all have permission. I'm giving you permission now if you need someone to give you permission, giving myself permission to access compassion. It's okay, you can have it, I can have it too. And when we Compassionate to ourselves, I know we've heard this all like a million times, when we're compassionate to ourselves, it means we have compassion to give to other people. And that's really true. Like if I have nothing to give you, then we're both out of luck. <laughs> um, so it's really important to remember that compassion starts with us. It's not being selfish to be kind to yourself. It's not, um, you're not taking time away from doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing so that you know, we can do the right thing. I don't know, I keep saying that, but, um, <laughs> but there we go. Do the right thing, be compassionate. Um, and it really, it starts with us and it's kind of always the answer to whatever is going on. What, what compassionate thing could I do right now? So compassion isn't like something that you just do once and then you tick it off and you're done for life. Like, oh, well, I meditated this year, I'm good, I'm done, no. It's endless. <laughs> it's, you know, we have to repeat it and do it again and again and again. Um, and as needed as well. You can't say, oh, well, I did the meditation. I still feel bad. I shouldn't take, the, take a distress day or whatever, right? Um, and um, I had another point about it, but it can't be that important. So we'll move on. Um, <laughs> Oh, it is really important. <laughs> Here we go. The heart reminded me, because it's, it's, it's really it's in the heart. So we also don't have to do compassion perfectly. So you know how I said, oh, I have a, a, a problem with self-compassion. Well, 
it's okay because when I get off the path, when I forget, when I get myself in trouble, I can just get back on. I can just do what's the, what's the compassionate thing to do. I can do the next compassionate thing and then we're all good. It's okay. I learned the lesson. It's a, rep- a lesson that needs to be repeated. Compassion needs to be practiced daily, hourly, by the second. Um, and it all starts here with me, with you, with us. And um, my wish for everyone today is that you connect with and find your creative community, um, which is such a gift to me. And maybe, you know, we've got a room of really cool people. So maybe your creative new bestie is right here next to you today. Um, And my wish for you also is that as you go along on your creative path, that uh, you find a lot of compassion along the way. So thank you. Let's ask, let's ask her some questions. I'll play the uh, Geraldo Rivera character. Uh, jo- Josh, Jason, you have a question? Uh, so you were talking about compassion quite a lot mm-hmm. uh, for yourself, I guess. Mm-hmm. And we were, I guess, wondering how you apply that to other people and those around you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think one of the most important things that I really try to do to practice compassion with people is to be present with them and to really listen to them and be there with them, not sort of tell them, you know, we should do this, we should do that, even though I like to be bossy. Um, But yeah, I think being really present with people um, because then I can know what the next thing that maybe I could do to be compassionate could be as well. But I think um, for me, it just means a lot to me when people look, you know, paying attention and present with me and, uh, and are listening. So that's sort of something that I, that's where, where it kind of starts, I guess, for me. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Uh, no one on this side? Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I just wanted to ask how you sort of balance having people that are like you mm-hmm. and then people who aren't like you, so that you don't like end up just getting in a little bubble or echo chamber mm-hmm. there. Um, so how do I deal with people who are like me and people who aren't like me? Yeah, like how do you find a balance between them, yeah. I mean, I just live in the world, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, like, I do talk a lot, and a lot of my work is obviously focused on people who we, we're doing very similar things, but I, I do leave the house too and, and talk to, you know, as I call them, normal people, um, and that, that really does help because... Do you uh, go out of your way to, to not... You were talking about that mm-hmm. kind of filtering you do, right? Where you, like, sometimes it's just the energy vampires have to go. Yes. Do you ever sometimes intentionally make sure that someone who is really radically living a different life with different perspectives and very much, mm-hmm. you know, a debate partner is around? Is that a thing you consciously do? Um, you lost me at the end. I'm sorry. Like, I'm nervous. <laughs> I've had moments uh-huh. where I realize that this person is so unlike me, okay. sees the world so differently, it would be mm-hmm. very easy for me to go, no. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need your... But then, mm-hmm. I, then I'll turn around and go, wait a second, I can learn from this. This is uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I want to go deeper into that relationship. Okay. Have you ever, do you ever find yourself facing those Yeah, I moments? do. I do. Because I think that's a moment. Um, that's, that's a compassionate choice, yeah, right? It is. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I do. And oftentimes that for me is family. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm hesitant. Me that's too. Why I'm, <laughs> that's why I'm a little... I thought that's why I was like, oh, what do you mean? I do, but they're the, they're the good ones. They're the ones we're... <laughs> no. And, okay, and see what I said there where I said, oh, well, they're the good ones? No, they're all good. They're all good because of exactly what you said, right? Like, they teach me. Because I'm a bit of a nightmare, right? Like, you heard some of this stuff, and it's, like, not always very cute. So I'm difficult. And then they when they're being difficult and not doing what I think they should do or saying what I think they should say, or that's when they teach me. And that's, <laughs> it's just, yeah, I'm really lucky to, I'm really lucky to have them. And 
Sorry, everyone. Sorry, family. <laughs> I know you feel the same way about me, too. <laughs> um, my question was how this compassion filters into your actual artwork. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel like in my artwork, I have to practice sort of a, a type of sensitivity to the world that's going on around me. How do I put this in words? So I have to be sensitive to everything that's going on and then I have to interpretive and it, and I have to be empathetic. Like when I'm drawing my cats, I'm in their bodies and in their experiences and their expressions. And, um, and so that does kind of like align, I guess, in the world of compassion. I'm putting myself in someone else's shoes, um, even if it is cats. Um, so that comes up a lot and then I feel like I, when I share my work, I like to share sort of a positive message and vibe, and I think people can connect to that as well. So. What about when you mm. produce something that you just hate? Like, the, you, you, oh, okay. right? What, what do you, how do you, what? Okay, so I, um, so right now, I'm working on a new body of work, and it's, I'm really pushing myself to be more conceptual, because as you see, most of my stuff, maybe it's not so much about concept, it's about the quality of the craft and the look and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm really pushing myself to be conceptual. And I like maybe one and a half things I've done on this since January. I hate a lot of it. Yeah, and um, I, just, I just have to do the work. I don't know if I'm in the stage where it's like, I don't really know if this is any good or if this is the path I should be going on. Am I wasting my time? Like all of that stuff is just like going on, but the only answer is to just do the work. That's my job as an artist. I just have to, I just have to do it. And then maybe it will work out. Maybe it will turn a corner or at least will lead me to the next right thing that I kind of have to do. Thanks Hi. for the great talk. That was, you know, really, I can relate to all that stuff. Um, I guess my question is, <clears throat> I loved your little mini cats and, and I was wondering if you could share some funny stories about that we all deal with like, <laughs> well, no, we all, sort of similar, but we, were, we're, we all deal with social media and, mm. and trolling and that kind of stuff. And so mm -hmm. um, I think it's a beautiful thing when you can, can be compassionate and and funny and I, I want to be more like you and so when you have those kind of comments like oh hey my daughter does the same art that you do mm -hmm. can you tell me some stories or relate some experience of what kind of things you can say to mm -hmm. uh, those moments in, that we all have in our life yeah no social media is really great but it's also it just feels like a lot of and it feels like a lot of energy coming at me and it's can be all sorts of energy and all sorts of people. Um, and so, well, if your daughter could do that, she must be a really good artist. But, uh, <laughs> but um, I, it's kind of nice because it is behind a screen and I can just go, okay, they really need attention. Like they really are like hurting, they need attention. And then I can decide, do I want to give them att int attention? Or do I want to leave it? So I've had people say that they feel my work is too expensive on social media. And I'm not going to get into an argument about price points. It's just you don't want to spend that money on that. It's not, it's not expensive. It's very fairly priced. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, it is. I made it that price for a reason. And so I have the choice of just ignoring it. Or I can say, well, this could be an education moment to share, you know, like, this is why it's not $3 or whatever you think you should be paying for it. And um, yeah, and so I kind of, you know, but I don't really feel a need to engage with everybody who says something to me online. And you can really just block and delete them. <laughs> hey, Tara. Hi. Um, I'm interested in knowing when your paper art started at what age mm -hmm. and uh, how do you discover this is your path? Yeah, so a lot of trial and error and doing a lot of different things. Um, it kind of came when I was studying illustration. I did some paper paperwork and I loved paper and I 
just collected it because I loved it so much. Um, and then I did, you know, those 30, 30 days do a project kind of thing. Um, so I did that. I did maybe three of the days. I don't like that kind of structured exercise, but I made paper artworks and I was just like, oh, this is it. I found it, finally. <laughs> How many other how many other mediums did you try? Um, I mean, I've tr I've made puppets. I've used uh, digital. I've done digital illustration. I've done watercolor. I'm not good at that. I like gouache, um, collage. I'm really into. Like I've just tried a bunch of things. Oil paint, like to varying degrees of success, but yeah, paper's kind of kind of my favorite. It's a, it's a jam. Yeah. One more question. We're going to wrap it up. It's all this side. This is the power side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today's presentation is about compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to teleport you. You have one minute with Donald Trump. What will you say? Thank you. Okay. Um, Thanks, Perry. Okay, that... <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I would be really afraid if I was in front of Donald Trump for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I would be. Um, because, and the reason is because he is an admitted sexual predator. And I am a survivor of sexual abuse and sexual violence in my childhood. And I cannot believe that he's the president of the United States of America. I have nothing to say to him. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs>